Hello, today I'm going to show you how I set up my Neptune Dose to do safe automatic water changes on my Red Sea Reefer 250. Hello and welcome back to Amro Azul TV. I'm going to show you a little bit of my fish as we talk about uh, how I set up the dose for automatic water changes. So obviously keeping a reef tank, especially uh, one where you're keeping SPS, uh, there, there's a lot of maintenance involved. And uh, one thing uh, that I've been trying to do uh, as I'm you know, heading towards year three of uh, set, having this tank set up is to try to kind of minimize the work that I have to put in uh, day in and day out to, uh, to maintain the tank. So obviously uh, one of the biggest chores uh, uh, that uh, is involved in keeping a saltwater tank is uh, your water changes. So uh, if you could uh, automate it, then that would be great. And uh, shout out to Potomac Reef uh, who kind of inspired me to uh, uh, set up uh, the dose for automatic water changes. And I'm gonna show you how uh, I set up my system. Uh, and uh, specifically, I'm doing water changes from the basement. And that has its own set of challenges in terms of making sure that uh, you don't flood the, the basement and drain your tank. So the first thing that I had to do was enlarge the hole that I already had that uh, ran my RODI uh, power and line into my tank. So now there's room for two additional uh, lines for the dose as well as a USB cord. Uh, and so a half an inch hole uh, uh, worked well for me. And then what I, uh, in, so part of my installation is I used the FMM module, which allows you to hook up uh, up to four optical uh, water level sensors. Uh, in my case, I used two. And I had one optical level sensor that's acting as my high water line in the sump. Uh, this sensor fit really well. The, the Red Sea Reefer comes with a, a, a bracket for a float switch uh, as part of their gravity fed ATO, but I removed that and, and actually that hole is perfect for attaching one of the optical sensors. So this is my high level sensors. It's currently out of the water. And if ever, uh, if my tank kind of overfills, then it will trip out that high water level sensor. The low level water sensor is in the baffle, the, kind of the bubble trap in the Red Sea Reefer sump. And it's just kind of barely immersed in the water. And I'll tell, I'll tell you why it's barely immersed in the water, but essentially like it, I just want to, if anything kind of drains like a, about half a liter of water, it will trip that water level sensor. Uh, this is the line that I'm actually taking dirty water from the sump. It's in the skimmer chamber. And this line is going through, uh, so this is really important, uh, especially for me, it's going through a little T. Uh, one part of the T is going back to the basement where I'm daring the water. And the other part is uh, the black line is actually going into my apex solenoid valve. Uh, which is just not connecting, uh, not connected to anything on the other end. But essentially, the purpose of this solenoid is that it will suck in air to break a gravity siphon in case of a catastrophe where uh, the dose is essentially uh, uh, the dose is broken or or just something is draining water from my tank. Uh, this other blue line is uh, is where the new fresh water uh, is coming in and it's uh, emptying into the return uh, section of my chamber. All right, this is what the hole looks like on the basement side. You see there's a whole bunch of wires that are going down uh, into my dose as well as my two containers for RODI and fresh salt water. All right, so here is uh, uh, my dose. It's uh, just simply sitting on a shelf uh, near in the basement uh, where we have a whole bunch of other junk. Uh, and then uh, right underneath uh, the dose is, I have two uh, 40 gallon brutes. Uh, the brute on the right, uh, sorry, the brute on the left is uh, where my RODI water and my Tanzi osmolator are. The one on the left is for uh, new, uh, new salt water. And then I have a, a drain bucket here. So the RODI system is here. I have a float valve. So this is directly plugged in into my RODI system. Uh, it's uh, uh, the float, the valves allow me to just turn on the tap and have this thing fill up and then it stops automatically when it reaches the, uh, the, the float valve. And then uh, on the right here, this is where I have my uh, salt water, my fresh salt water. Uh, you see here that I have uh, this tube 
so the problem with the, the silicone tubing that I'm using is it floats so you have to kind of weigh it down somewhere and there's many ways to do this I just took like a, a PVC pipe uh, drilled a hole through it and then I fed the line through this hole coming out on the other side so it's always kind of sucking from the bottom and the PVC pipe uh, sinks so it, it's always keeping the the tube in the bottom and, and you see here I have a Tanzi Osmo uh, sorry a Tanzi pump that is just uh, uh, is on a timer and it agitates this water keeps it aerated it comes on like a couple of times a day all right so the tube going into my dose is going to this first uh, pump here so the first pump takes salt water new salt water uh, from the container and it pumps it upstairs into the tank and then the other pump head uh, is taking water from my sump uh, into this uh, drainage container right now so right now i'm just using a five gallon uh, bucket as my uh, drain because I'm, I'm using the dirty water to do automatic water to do water changes on my evo tank uh, but i have enough uh, line that i could actually run this straight into my uh, drain for my laundry top so that's how everything is wired uh, this is uh, what uh, this is uh, the dose in action doing an automatic water changes and you'll see that it's a little bit loud uh, so you want to run this when you're not around because you'll definitely hear it. Uh, and uh, water here is uh, is uh, you know water is uh, draining into my uh, uh, my five gallon bucket here because again I'm I'm reusing this dirty water for my frac tank. Here's a cartoon of what's happening with my system. So uh, here is the dose in the basement. Uh, my osmolator uh, is uh, adding water to the sump. Here is my uh, uh, si uh, the line that's draining the tank, uh, uh, taking the dirty salt water out. And this is the line that's adding new salt water in. Uh, this is my high level optical sensor, my low level optical sensor and my solenoid valve. So I'm doing my auto water changes between noon and 2 p.m. And during that time, I have my automatic top off uh, off. The, uh, the reason for that is uh, obviously uh, I'm relying on these optical sensors to tell me if there's a problem. But if let's say there was a problem with with uh, those, for example, taking a lot of water, more water than needed and, and draining the tank. Uh, if the automatic top off unit is on, then it will compensate uh, for the dose draining my tank by adding fresh water into the sump and this will keep the level water level uh, stable in the sump until the automatic uh, uh, automatic top off essentially drains all of my RODI reservoir and so essentially what I'm, what I'm trying to say is the automatic top off system is going to compensate for any problem that you have with the dose so this is why I'm I'm only doing water changes between noon and 2 p.m. and during that time I am I'm removing, I'm not using the uh, automatic top off. Uh, and so if there is a problem with the dose malfunctioning, I'm gonna catch it with my uh, water level sensors. Okay, so under normal circumstances, uh, uh, when I'm doing the automatic water changes, the osmolator is off, uh, the water level should be between the high sensor and the low sensor, and the solenoid valve that my drain line is running through is gonna be closed. And by having the solenoid valve, valve closed, the dose is essentially able to pull a prime and remove the water from here. Okay, I'm gonna take you through a couple of problems that I'm, uh, I've essentially de designed my system to, uh, to take care of if they were to occur. So uh, one, the first problem is, if for some reason the sump level, the water level in the system goes too high, uh, this would happen, for example, if my drain, drain line is clogged or somehow the dose pump that's adding water is, is adding more water than it's draining. In which case, the water level in the sump will rise and at that point, at that point, it will trigger the high level optical water sensor. And I have a line of code, which I'm gonna show you uh, that when, when this high level water sensor is triggered, then it turns off the dose permanently until I do a manual reset. So that's one type of error. The other type of error that I've designed a system to kind of guard against is if the sump, the water levels uh, in the sump goes too low. And that could happen if, uh, if for some reason, like the new salt water tank is draining, or if for some reason the dose pump that's draining the uh, 
uh, that's draining the sump, that's, take, that's taking the dirty salt water out, uh, is uh, malfunctioning and it's no longer sealing this line, creating a gravity cycle. So if that happens, the, low, the water level is going to go below this low level sensor and that's going to trip and it, there is uh, some lines of codes that again I'm going to show you that will turn off uh, the dose as well as open the solenoid valve the open solenoid valve is going to let water sorry it's going to let air into this line and that will break the siphon as i as i demoed in this previous video uh, and i'm going to also show you this in action uh, if i if i remove this line from the dose and and let a gravity siphon uh, drain my sump all right uh, the last type of problem which is the, the most difficult to solve is if you have a dose failure or a gravity sif uh, siphon outside of the typical water change time when the ATO is actually on. Uh, so uh, I'm doing water changes between 12 and noon, uh, sorry uh, 12 and 2 p.m. So if there was a problem that were to happen with the dose let's say at like 6 p.m. Uh, and uh, the, the dose is no longer sealing, sealing this drain tube that will allow a gravity siphon to develop or if somebody pumped this line and knocked it out of the dose and, and allowed the gravity siphon uh, to drain my sump. Uh, so the problem here is that this, the, this line is going to be draining the tank but the osmolator is going to compensate. So the only way to kind of guard against this problem is you have to make sure that your automatic top off is supplying water at a slower rate than the dose line is removing water. So when this problem happens, then because the water that's exiting the sump is exiting at a much larger volume than the water that is being added by your automatic top off, the sump is gonna eventually, uh, the water level is gonna uh, go lower and this will trap the optical sensor here, the low optical sensor. And then I have some lines of code that will permanently turn off the dose as well as open the solenoid, creating a siphon break by letting uh, air into this line. Uh, so uh, in my osmolator, uh, you could actually open up the controller and there is a little uh, 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 there's a little dial where you could set the power of uh, uh, the power that is being supplied to the Tanzi uh, uh, pump. Uh, so by doing that, if you have a Tanzi osmolator, you could actually crank down the volume and, and make sure that there's only a trickle of water that the, the, the Tanzi is pumping out. And that's how I got the volume of water that is coming into the sump from the ATO to be a lot uh, lower than the volume that's exiting from uh, my dose tube here. Before I show you the safety checks in action, I just want to walk you through some of the bits of code that uh, you should have if you're running a system like mine. So uh, just first off, this is my high sump uh, optical sensor and my low sump optical sensor. The optical sensor, the apex by default, if they're wet, they're closed, and if they're dry, they're open. So this is showing me that the high level sensor is open, dry, and the low level sensor is uh, wet. Okay, uh, when you add the dose, you're going to get this fun little uh, window with uh, your Apex uh, add and your, uh, sorry, uh, you have two pumps. I named them add and remove. And if you click on them here, you see that I'm uh, uh, changing uh, uh, four, uh, uh, four liters between uh, uh, two, uh, uh, sorry, uh, noon and 2 p.m. And uh, on the remove side, you're going to see also uh, remove four liters between two and uh, 4 p.m. Uh, okay, so very quickly, oh, no, I don't want to, this is my alkalinity. Uh, so I have a couple of, um, a couple of uh, virtual modules that uh, I wrote to essentially whenever uh, I have a problem, uh, it stops the dose. So uh, one is called some problem, and I'm going to walk you through the code here. So it's set to off. So normally there isn't a problem, so it's, it's set to off. Uh, but if the sump level was open that means that the uh, the low level water sensor is dry that's bad so uh, the this virtual outlet some problem gets turned on or if the sump level is too high then this virtual outlet gets stripped on uh, I defer one second before I actually turn the outlet on because sometimes if the water level is fluctuating and the optical sensor is always going between wet and dry I don't want to constantly be tripping this outlet uh, I make sure that this outlet is turned on for at least 10 seconds. And then this is this is the really important command that you gotta have, it's this when command. So when th this outlet is on for more than two seconds, then it permanently stays in the on position until you manually switch it to off. 
This is really important because uh, if you have a problem with your water level sensors, you want to make sure that you put the dose offline until you inspect things. You don't want it to kind of go back online. So the problem is if you don't have this line and let's say the, uh, the dose drains your sump and then it turns off the dose, but then when the ATO kicks on, it's going to make the water levels go back to normal and this condition is no longer be uh, going to be true. And then the dose is going to continue uh, doing your water changes. And, and if there's a malfunction, then, then you're going to constantly be having these problems. So this is why you want to have this code that essentially is going to permanently turn off the dose until you manually reset this virtual outlet. All right. So now if I go to dose add, I have this line of code here that if some problem is equals to on, if, if my uh, water level sensor is stripping the virtual outlet some problem, then it turns off the dose uh, pump head. And you see it's the same thing here. Uh, so if some problem is on, then it turns off the, uh, the dose. So this essentially guards against uh, uh, any kind of fluctuations in, in the water level uh, in the sump that would be indicative of uh, a dose malfunction. Uh, I also had, I created another virtual outlet called mixing salt. So I, I'm, I'm mixing salt in the same container that I'm actually uh, keeping my salt, uh, new salt water. So whenever I'm mixing salt, I, I put this on and it will essentially automatically, uh, let me refresh. So when I turn this on, then it turns off the pump head and no more water changes are uh, can happen unless I, I put this back to auto, in which case we're back in business. Uh, then the last thing is the code for the solenoid valve, the siphon uh, break, and essentially it's it's fallback set to off, fallback on. So if there's a problem, it will just like open up the valve and, and the dose is not gonna be able to do any water changes. Uh, if the sump level uh, 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 gets too low, then it, it gets turned on. If there is a sump problem uh, in terms of the water levels being out of whack, then the uh, solenoid opens again to prevent a gravity siphon. Uh, and then one last thing. Is my Tanzi Osmolator. I've programmed it to essentially, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, so if time uh, is between noon and two, then it's, it turns off automatically. So that's the time where I'm doing my uh, water changes. And again, I, I, wanna, I want my water level sensors to catch a problem uh, during a water change. And for me to be able to do that, I have to make sure that the osmolator is not compensating for any problems that the dose is introducing. So that's uh, essentially all the line of code that I've written to uh, to kind of uh, deal with uh, issues uh, with uh, with the changes in my water levels in the sump uh, during automatic water changes. Okay, guys, we're gonna catastrophe test uh, the dose uh, system. So uh, uh, this uh, pump here is the one that is draining water from my tank. So this line is currently in my sump under under the water line and my sump is actually above the tank up up there so my tank is right there and um, if anything were to happen if the dose is no longer sealing this uh, or if somebody accidentally like whacked this line off or cut it then this will start the gravity siphon that if uh, left unchecked would drain my tank so let's see whether my float level sensors and whether my um, uh, solenoid valve is gonna break the siphon. So we're gonna test this here. Uh, I put this little towel here because I know it's gonna get a little bit wet. I'm just gonna pinch this line here as I pull it, wiggle it down. All right, there we go. So we have a gravity siphon. Is it gonna turn off? So you hear the ATO trying to compensate, but I've set the ATO to essentially act really slow. So I think we should trip the low water sensor, low level water sensor now. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Okay. I'm gonna have faith in the system. Yeah, okay, there we go guys, it worked. Okay, so I have to admit that uh, I shot this last scene uh, three or four times before I got it right. Uh, the first few times I, I didn't really realize uh, how important it is to set the flow on uh, uh, Tanzi Osmolator to, uh, to be slower than uh, water draining out of the tank. Uh, before, uh, essentially I would end up removing two or three liters out of the tank without, uh, without changing the water level at all. Uh, so I had to crank down the, thus, uh, the Tanzi Osmolator several times. And also you have to kind of be careful in how you position the low level water sensor. You want it just below the water line in the sump. Uh, you don't want it to be too low in the sump or else uh, you're going to be draining like uh, several liters before uh, before you actually uh, reach that level. And you don't want it to be like too high in the water uh, uh, in the water uh, column also because uh, uh, that will just gonna create, it's gonna create a lot of false positives where your sensor is just gonna be tripping all the time because of just regular fluctuations. So it, it took a while to kind of optimize this. Uh, but overall, I, I think I'm pretty happy with the system. It's been running for about uh, a week and a half now without any issues uh, and uh, I'm, I'm you know, it seems like maybe the gravity siphon thing is is a bit theoretical, and and I know many people that have their systems set up without it. But I just wanted the extra peace of mind, knowing that if if the worst were to happen, if one of my kids pulled that line like I did in the test, I want to make sure that uh, there's going to be a fail-safe uh, system that's going to stop this gravity siphon from draining my sump. All right, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as usual, I uh, enjoy reading your comments, and if you have any thoughts on the system, please do let me know. Have a good one.